about. I said we're talking about Jesus. He lives. He is alive and well. And he's living down in my soul. You can't let me doubt him because I know too much about him. He's alive and he's living down in my soul. Does anybody know that Jesus is alive? Do you know that Jesus is alive? Give him praise for being a true and living God. He is not moving. He's not Muhammad. His name is Jesus. And he's alive and he's well. When you call on Jesus, something changes when you call on him. Because he's alive and he's well. I know he is. I know he is. I tried him and I know him. And I know him to be an alive God. I know him to be alive in my soul. He woke me up this morning. He's alive in my soul. He started to go my way. He's alive.
when we think about how you look beyond our faults and you saw our needs, God. Oh God, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not ashamed to lift our hands. We're not ashamed to tell you hallelujah. We're not ashamed to say thank you, Jesus, because you, it was nobody but you. Time and time again, God, you brought us from a mighty long way. You brought us from a mighty long way. And we thank you, Jesus. So many times we fell short. So many times we error and we strayed, God. And we went against your word. But you did not leave us. And you did not forsake us. And we tell you, thank you, Jesus. We tell you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have thine own way in this house, God. Create in us a clean heart, God. And renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We look to the hills and with coming our help, God. Let your power fill this place. Let your Holy Ghost power fill this place, God. Speak to our hearts, God. Open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing. Oh God, run our cups over, God, that we have room to receive no more. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven, feed us. Till we won't no more. When it's all said and done, God. May your kingdom be edified. May you be glorified. And may the devil continue to be horrified. And we'll give your name all the praise. And we give your name all the glory. And we give your name all the honor. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And all of God's people said amen. 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 Go with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And we're going down to the 31st verse. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And it reads, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, uh -huh. rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, yes. who also maketh intercession for us. Yes. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mm -hmm. So tribulation of distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, yes. as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Yes. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yes. Nay. Somebody say nay. nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his holy word. Amen. And being led by God, we've been led to preach from the topic, stay with God. Amen. Stay with God. Amen. Don't fall. Don't you give up. Don't deviate from the plan. Amen. But you got to stay with God. Amen. Amen. And that's how God sent me to tell you. That's how you're going to win the battle. Amen. Amen. You got to learn how to stay with God. Amen. God brought back to my memory my experience climbing Stone Mountain with my Lyme brothers. For a long while, many people shared their experiences with me, and I cannot stand here and lie to you. Many of those testimonies put a little fear in my heart regarding the day that I would attempt to climb that treacherous slope. For the day came that we all agreed to make this journey as brothers. So we arrived and we began to walk and we approached a steep hill that I just knew was the actual mountain. Oh, how we walked and we sweated and we huffed and we puffed. And by the time we made it to the top of the hill, I fixed my mouth to say, oh, that wasn't that bad. 
Amen. And, and, and my brothers, they laughed and sadly informed me that we had not even made it to the mountain yet. Oh, the hurt and the disappointment that I felt. I was tired before the journey even began. And I would not dare discuss with you what we smelt like and how we look, what we looked like after we came down from that mountain. But what I feel compelled to share with you today is that though the large rocks were in our way, though the mountain was high and the hills were difficult to climb, amen, we made it to the top of Stone Mountain. Children of God, there are moments in our lives but we have to remind ourselves to stay with God. Despite what your situation looks like, you got to stay with God. Despite the pressures and the weight of life, you got to stay with God. Despite the persecution and the lies, you have to stay with God. Despite the agony in the shadow of your past, you got to stay with God. Despite the enemy's agenda to sift you as wheat, you got to make a decision that you're going to stay with God. Despite the diagnosis and the prognosis, you have to make up in your mind that I'm staying with God. Even on your worst day, you have to have enough faith and hope in God to still lift your hands and declare that no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm experiencing, I will stay with God. My declaration is that I will stay with God no matter what it looks like. I will stay with God no matter what it feels like. I will stay with God come sunshine or rain. Do I have a witness in the house on today? I will stay with God whether I'm broke or rich. I will stay with God whether I'm up or down. I will stay with God in sickness and in health. Do I have a witness in the house on today from somebody who has made up in their mind that I'm staying with God? It's for God I'll live and it is for God I'll die. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Behave how you want to behave. But it's, for, it's God for me. I'm staying with God. My brothers and my sisters, even when others make decisions that are against God, it is the Christian's obligation. It is the followers of Christ, the believer's obligation to stay with God. Amen. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. There ought to be a difference in the lives of the believers versus those who are in the world. Yeah. Amen. We ought to see a difference. Yeah. So if you've been walking with Christ for 10, 20 years and we don't see a difference, that's a problem. Yeah. We ought to see a prop, we ought to see a difference in your life. Yeah. The reality of the matter is that making such declaration over your life sounds easy. But it is not always easy. Because such declaration must be followed through, even when you don't feel like it. See, we say a lot of stuff, but when it comes to doing, amen, we get scared. We back up, we back out of it. But when we confess that Jesus is Lord, when we confess Romans 10, 9, amen, he's going to put you to the test. I said God will put you to the test. David was in the middle of the wilderness. When he took the ink pen and some parchment paper and wrote these words that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. His situation was something else, but his mouth spoke greater. His mouth spoke a life. His mouth spoke a word. His mouth spoke commitment. His mouth spoke his loyalty to God. So even when you're going through what you're going through. Amen. You, you got to make up in your mind that I'm staying loyal to God because he's staying loyal. He stayed loyal to me. When I look back over my life, I realize it was God all the time. Everything that I went through, he never left me. He never forsook you. He was there with you every step of the way. Yes, he was. Thank you, Jesus. There are three things in the text that I believe will help us stay with God on today. If you're going to stay with God, you must first have confidence in God's ability. You gotta have confidence in God's ability. Amen. The old folk used to say, God don't need no coward soldiers. You gotta have confidence in the God that you serve. You gotta have confidence in God that this work that he started within you, he is going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You got to wake up in the morning, look yourself in the mirror, and tell yourself that you're going to live and not die because of the God that you serve, because of his reputation, because he has never failed yet. 
That's why I have confidence. David said I was young and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. Is there anybody's testimony in the house on today? God has never failed me yet. He's never failed me yet. When it looks like when it looked like it was over, God somehow, some way, He stepped in and He made a way out of no way. I've seen God do it. I've seen God be God. I've seen God pull me out of some stuff. I've seen God heal me. I've seen God make a way. I've seen God renew my spirit. I've seen him pick me up in my testimony. I know the God that I serve. You gotta know the God that you serve. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fiery furnace, but they said no matter what you say. And even if he does not come, I know the God that I serve. And the God that I serve, he is an able God. He's an able God. Yes, he is. He is more. He's more than able to do it. That's why I have confidence in God's ability. If you were to go back and read this entire chapter, amen, you will discover that in this particular chapter, Paul profoundly asked seven rhetorical questions. And surprisingly, they all share the same answers. There are three answers to all these questions. No, no one, nothing. Amen. No. No one. Nothing. Let me call your attention to the first two questions. He asks us, what shall we then say to these things? Nothing. These things in our lives, we ain't got nothing to say to them if God is for us. What then shall we say to our haters? What then shall we say to the plots and the twists of, our, of the enemy? Nothing. Because God is on my side. We ain't got to say nothing. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You ain't got to open your mouth. It's a fixed fight. You ain't got to hop in the ring with the enemy. You got to, yours is to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's the God that we serve. He fights our battles for us. We don't have to hop in there and throw rocks with the enemy. We don't have to come down from our high place and fight and argue with the enemy. Ours is to stand still. That's yours. And when you stand still, you're going to see. You're going to see the God that you serve. You're going to see that the God that you serve is not slack concerning his promises. You're going to see the God that you serve is in charge. That's what you're going to see when you stand still. Amen. So often the enemy, that's the enemy's job. He wants you. That's what he's doing. The Bible says he's going to and fro. He wants you to hop in there. He wants you to come down to his level. That's the enemy's job is to bring you down. The enemy is never going to pull you up. You do understand that. Every time that you get into a battle, in a confrontation with the enemy, you are coming down. Amen. We have a word that we stand on. And in the time of trouble, He's going to hide us. That's the God that we serve. Romans 8 is widely regarded as one of the most profound chapters in the Bible. Rich with spiritual insights and theological depth, it delves into the believer's relationship with God, the transformative power of the Holy Spirit, and the assurance of salvation. In this particular chapter, the Apostle Paul outlines the life-changing implications of being in Christ Jesus. He does not so much place his focus on mysticism, but more so on spiritual doctrine that helps believers transform themselves into the image of Christ. And every day that you get up, yours is to transform into the image of Christ. When you go on your job, the image of Christ. In your home, the image of Christ. When you're in the boardroom, the image of Christ. When you're out into the community, the image of Christ, ours is to represent Christ. And how we represent him is by putting on his image. Because it's difficult to say that you represent Christ, but you don't look like it. It's difficult to say that you represent Christ, but what's coming out of your mouth don't sound like it. It's difficult to say that you represent Christ, but every time we turn around, you're throwing rocks and you're hiding your hand. How? Come on. How are you a representative of Christ? But you don't want to look like him. You don't want to be like him. You don't want to live like him. 
And we all have flaws. I said we all have flaws. We all have problems. We all have struggles. But at the end of the day, yours is to conform and transform into the image of God. So what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us, my brothers and my sisters, while we are on life's treacherous, tedious journey? We must have confidence in God's ability. The hymn writer backs me up when he said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. In the text, Paul outlines the undeniable conclusion as to why believers should have confidence in God's ability. It's right there in the text, if God be for us, he said. Amen, that's our confidence, if God be for us. Amen, we can have confidence in God's ability by simply understanding that God is for us. Yeah. Amen. There is no greater truth than knowing that God is really for you. Yeah. Amen. When you know that God is for you, you then understand that there is nothing that will able to be able to stand against you. Yeah. When you know that God is for you, you understand that the weapon may form, but it will not prosper. Yeah. When you know that God is for you, Amen. you understand that every tongue that rises against you, Amen. God will condemn them. You know that God. Is, when you know that God is for you. You understand that when your enemies come to eat up on your, your flesh, yeah. they will stumble and fall. Yeah. When you understand that God is for you, you know that the Lord is your shepherd. Yeah. When you know that God is for you, you understand that thou will keep you in perfect peace. When you know that God is for you, you need not sweat, you need not worry, you need not quit. Because God is for you. Somebody say, God is for you. When God is for you, he is more than the whole world against you. When God is for you, you can go to sleep and pull the covers up around your shoulders, and you can rub your feet together knowing that all things will work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. When God is for you, you can rest in God. Amen. And there, is, there are a lot of things that we can ask Alexa and Siri But there are some things in your life that only God can do. I said there are some things in your life that only God can do. Only God can turn your diagnosis around. Only God can deliver you from the guilt and the stain of sin. Only God can give you beauty for your ashes. Only God can take the crooked and make it straight. Only God can make a river in the desert. Only God can make a way in the wilderness. Only God can pick you up. Only God can turn you around. Only God can place your feet on a holler, on a higher ground. Can't nobody do it but God. And that's why you ought to stay with him. Because he is the only way. He is the only way. The second reason why you ought to stay with God is because God made provisions for your problems. Yeah. God made provisions for your problems. So often we get worried about problems. We get worried when the problems arise. We get worried with our problem. But we serve a God who made provisions for our problems. If you look real carefully at the text, Paul explains that God has already made provisions for the issues of our past, our present, and our future. It's right there in the text. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How shall he not with his son? Look at the God we serve. Freely give us all things. He didn't even spare his son. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? That's the kind of God that we serve. He freely give us all things. And over in Psalm it says, what shall we render to God for all of his benefits toward us? What can we give God for how he keeps on making a way? What can we give God for how he keeps on waking us up? What shall we give God for how he keeps on restoring us and reviving us and lifting us? What shall we render to God? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. It is God that justifies. 
Stop doing God's job. It is God that justifies. He, the Bible does not say you justify. The Bible says that God justifies. Who is he that condemn it? Let he without sin cast the first stone. It is Christ that died, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God. He did the greatest work. He did the greatest work. Some of us, we do some great work now. And when we go to our jobs, we're the best thing in the building. But we serve a God who has done a greater, he's done a greater work. And this work that he did at Calvary's cross, Cover the whole sins of the world. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was abused for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed because he did the greatest work. So who is he that condemned it? We got to stop condemning people. We got to stop condemning people. Because it's entertainment when it's somebody else's son. It's entertainment when it's somebody else's daughter. It's entertainment when it's somebody else's child. But when it becomes you and yours, it's, it becomes a prayer request. When it's your time, when it's your season, when you're going through the fire, it becomes a prayer request. But you, you were laughing, you were picking and the others when they were going through. We got to stop condemning people. Because God has a way. And the same words that you spoke out of your mouth, he'll make you live them. I said God will make you live the same thing that you spoke. You spoke evil against somebody else. And God will bring it back around. You better be careful. You better be careful. It is Christ that died. And if anybody's going to condemn you, it's going to be God. But in the word, it says, there is, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You're covered when he is yours and you are here. You're covered. There is no condemnation. So get your mouth off of people. What you don't know about. And when you don't have all the facts, stop reading one side of the story. Put your focus on Jesus. That's where your focus ought to be anyway. It ought to be on Jesus. And if you're not speaking life, you ought to close your mouth. And if you're not helping, you ought to close your mouth. Because that's what God wants the believers to do. That's our responsibility. That's our obligation. When our brothers and our sisters are going through, it is ours to be there. It is ours to lift up. It is ours to pray for others when they're going through. Not join in in the condemnation. It is Christ that died, yea, rather than is risen. Again, and who is even at the right hand of God. This is what I love. He's even at the right hand of God. Right now, he's sitting on the right hand of God. And he is making intercessions for us. People of God, we must understand that God knew you way before 2024. Jeremiah 1 is the evidence that God knew us way before now. The word of God says that before you were formed in your mother's womb, that Christ knew you. But when God knew us before we were in our mother's womb, watch this, this means that he knew our problems. He knew you now. He knew you, that means he knew your problems before you were in your mother's womb. He knew our obstacles before we were in our mother's womb. He knew our struggles before we were in our mother's womb. He knew our end from our beginning before we were in our mother's womb. He knew the criticism and he knew the persecution we would face before we were in our mother's womb. And because we serve such a God, God made provisions for our problems while we were in our mother's womb. But it did not stop there. God made provisions for the entire world with one sacrifice. He would not even spare his only son because he cared and loved us so. So how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Simply put, if I sent you the best from heaven, if I gave you the best that I had, if I gave you the greatest gift to man, how shall I not with him give you everything else you need? 
And that's why we would call him Jehovah Jireh, because he's everything that we need. But we need him to provide. He shows up and he provides everything that we need. So the reality is, yes, we have problems, but we also have provisions for our problems. We have provisions. Thank you, Jesus. We have provisions for our problems. And if you have not caught on yet, let me tell you that Jesus was the provision. Jesus is the provision. Jesus will forever be the provision. Jesus was the provision. When there were only two fish and five loaves of bread, Jesus was the provision when you did not have it. Have you ever been broke and did not have it? But somehow, somewhere, some stuff changed, some stuff shifted. And you were able to pay your bills. You were able to keep your lights on. Jesus was a provision. When you did not deserve it, Jesus was a provision. When you were driving up and down the dangerous highways, Jesus was the provision. And even right now, Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for us day and night. He is interceding on our behalf. When we fall short, he intercedes. When we miss the mark, he intercedes. When we do not get it right, he intercedes. When we backslide, he intercedes. And he says grace and he says mercy. When we do not do what we're supposed to do. His grace and his mercy. They're new every morning. Simply because he intercedes. Thank God for interceding. Because the reality is that some of us should be dead sleeping in our graves. And the only reason that we're alive is because God interceded. He interceded on our behalf. The way to sin is death. Amen. We ought to be dead. But here's part B. But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Jesus interceded on our behalf. Thank you, Jesus, for interceding on our behalf. So if you're going to have, if you're going to stay with God, you must have confidence in God's ability. You must know that he made provisions for your problems. Then you must know that he will give you triumph in the middle of adversity. I said God will. He'll give you triumph in the middle of adversity. He'll give you the victory in the middle of what you're going through. You don't have to, and that's why you don't have to wait until the battle is over. When you know the God that you can serve, that you serve, you can praise God right in the middle of it. In the text, we are able to see some triumph in adversity. Who shall? Who shall? That sounds good to me. Maybe when your problems arise, who shall? When the naysayers come, who shall? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? There are some people on a mission to disturb your peace every day. I mean, they're on a mission to disturb your peace every day. On your job, in your home, in the community. They're on a mission to disturb your peace. But who shall separate us from the love of Christ? See how tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, these things, your problems, your circumstance, your situation, your condition, these things, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In the text, Paul gives us some possible circumstances that would attempt to deter us. But the reality of the matter is, is that no matter the circumstance, when you have a mind to stay with God, Thank you, Jesus. None of these things can separate us from the love of God. Amen. But I don't want you to miss it. I'm going to go back. When you have a mind to stay with God. Amen. You got to have a mind to stay with him. Despite what comes. Amen. Then none of these things can separate you. Here's another reality. Saints, God never promised us that we would not go through some stuff. God never promised us that every day 
will be a dance through the daisies and a trip through the tulips. And as a matter of fact, God prepares us for trouble by admitting that a man born of a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Paul concludes this chapter with a profound spiritual truth. Despite trials and tribulations, believers have an unshakable assurance of victory in Christ Jesus. You already got the victory. Amen. You already got the victory. My brothers and sisters, we are not merely survivors of adversity. Thank you, Jesus. We're not merely survivors. Amen. But we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And though we are faced with diverse situations and diverse circumstances, we somehow, some way, always emerge triumphant. And that's why the devil cannot stand here. Because every time he attacks, we are triumphant. Every attack that he tries fails, and we are triumphant. Every direction he comes, God blocks, and we are triumphant. Every person he sent to destroy your peace, he warns you, and we are triumphant. Every plan of the enemy against your life, God reveals it to us, and we are triumphant. Every time we fall, we somehow, some way, get back up again, and we are triumphant. And as I head to my seat, God sent me here to remind you that no matter what it looks like, stay with God. No matter what the problem is, stay with God. Through the good times, stay with God. And through the bad times, stay with God. When you're up, stay with God. And when you're down, stay with God. On the mountain, stay with God. And low in the valley, stay with God. When others leave you, stay with God. Stay with God no matter what it looks like. Stay with God no matter what you're going through. Through the divorce, stay with God. No matter who's not for you, stay with God. No matter who is against you, stay with God. No matter the diagnosis, stay with God. No matter the prognosis, stay with God. Come what may, stay with God. Trouble all around you, stay with God. I made up in my mind that I'm sticking with Jesus. On Monday, I'm sticking with Jesus. On Tuesday, I'm sticking with Jesus. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm sticking with Jesus. Saturday and Sunday, I'm sticking with Jesus. Because what shall we say to these things? We are more than conquerors. What shall we say to these things? We are more than conquerors. We serve a God who fights for us. We serve a God who defends us. We serve a God who hears our cry. We serve a God who pities every groan. We serve a God who never leaves us nor forsakes us. We serve a God who will leave the 99 and go after the one. We serve a God who will never fail. We serve a God who will not give up. We serve a God who will fight for you. Does anybody know he will? I said, does anybody know he will? Give him praise if you know he will. Does anybody know about it? His name is Jesus. That's why we're going to make it. Because he is with us. That's why you can take it. Because Jesus is with you. That's why you can endure it. Because Jesus is with you. He will never leave you. I said he'll never leave you. Don't forsake it. We serve a God. He will fight for us. His name is Jesus. The world rejected him, would not receive him. They spit on him, they mocked him. But I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad that he died for me. I'm so glad. Is there anybody's testimony? That you're glad that he died for you. I'm glad because in his resurrection, we got up too. And through his resurrection, we have power. Power every day of our lives. We have power 
We have power to, to walk like him. We have the power to talk like him. We have the power to be like God. Because he's in the son. So be not dismayed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever betide, God will. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God will. He'll take care of you. When you're going through what you're going through, don't you forget that you serve a God who will take care of you. When you're falling short and you're going astray, don't you forget that you serve a God who will take good care of you. And it is him who has been keeping you all along. Day by day, he's been keeping you. It is no goodness of your own, but only because of God's goodness. He keeps you. Day by day. The only way to the Father is that you come through Jesus. He says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. Set your affections on things that are above and not beneath. Y'all, we have to stop. We have to stop worrying about right now. We have an eternal home. We have an eternal destination that we got to fix our, our minds and our thoughts on. So while you're doing what you're doing and while you're going where you're going and while you're saying what you're saying, don't you forget that no man knows the day or the hour that the Son of Man shall return. And I don't know about you, but I want to be ready when it comes. Does anybody want to be ready? I want to be ready to go back to Jesus when it comes. I want to live. I want to see the man who sacrificed his life for my liberty. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. They are to sing forever of his saving grace. I want to go to heaven. That's where I long to be. I long to be in his presence day and night. I long to sing holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord. If that's your desire. If yours is to go back with Jesus when he comes. And you do not know him in the free part of your sin. He freely pardon your sins. If you do not freely know him, come to know him before it is everlasting too late. The doors of the church is open.
believe, I don't believe, I don't believe, I won't give up now, I don't believe, I keep holding to the gospel cloud, I don't believe, don't give up on God, I don't believe, is that anybody's testimony, I don't believe, he brought me over here, in Sunday school each Sunday at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary and that is followed by our preaching worship at 11:15 a.m. our in-person Bible study uh, convenes every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. so please come and join us to hear and study the Word of God all of our worship events are still available on our website www.shilohbaptistfortvalley.org We have a special thank you. Every kindness has a part in bringing joy to someone's heart. It's sometimes easy to forget that there are nice people out there doing nice things for others. Thank you for being such a special reminder. And this is from Sister Minnie Respert and family. The youth ministry will meet at 12 o'clock noon on Saturday, March 16th, beginning with choir rehearsal and culminating with a paint and learn session, which will begin at 1.30. Guess what? You are invited and encouraged to attend. We will spend time learning how to paint on canvas, spring art. If you are interested in attending, please notify the church secretary so that we have an accurate count. It takes all of us pouring into the lives of our children and encouraging them in their daily walk. Lunch will be served. Thank you, the youth ministry. The ladies, um, AKA um, the Alpha Kappa Alpha, Sorority <laughs> Incorporated are inviting you, the young ladies of our church, ages 12 to 18, to their annual joint sisterhood luncheon. The luncheon will be held on Saturday, April 20th at the Health and Physical Ed Complex on the beautiful campus of Fort Valley State University starting at noon. The tickets for that occasion are $50 each and can be purchased by calling 478-951-7786. You must do so by Monday, April 1st, 2024. For more information, please call 478-951-7786. 
86. And this is from co-chairs Dr. Alfreda Fluellen Hall and Dr. Tiffany Scandrett. Don't forget that the fourth anniversary uh, honoring Pastor Otha Wright Sr. will be held at White Springs Baptist Church on March 17th. The program starts at 2.30 p.m. Guest speaker will be Pastor Chris West from Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. The property manager at Valley High Apartments in Fort Valley uh, want to invite you to visit their complex Monday through Thursdays, 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. and Fridays, 8 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. if you desire a tour. They are located in the old high school building at 523 Vineville Street, Fort Valley. Please remember uh, to submit items to be considered for the bulletin boards. And on our sick list today, we have Sister Joanne Miller, Sister Cassandra Simmons, Brother Fred Williams, Brother Douglas Atkins, Sister Vandoria Coleman, Brother Gerald Nicholson, Sister Geraldine King Hostel. Please continue to pray for bereaved families in the area. And our known sick and shut-in include Sister Ovita Taylor, Deacon Sammy Scott, Sister Panky Preston, Sister Frances Dannelly, Sister Gladys Green, Brother William Scott, Dr. Donnie Bellamy, Sister Naomi Nicholson, Sister Lou Redding, Sister Rachel Johnson, Sister Luverne Hill, Sister Verlene Ballard, Sister Ella King, Sister Catherine Ezel, and Sister Maggie Thomas. Please share any other names with us that need to be on any of these lists. We appreciate your time and attention. God bless you. Have a great day and week. thank God for you coming here today. We do understand that there are many other places you could have gone, but the Shallow Church family do want to thank you for coming, and we do hope that you come again. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the word that was shared with us on today. It reminds us to stay with, stay with God, okay? We are confident in God, who he is, and who he is in our lives. I'm coming down from here because I believe that the full finish is for preaching. Um, I want to say to you, as we stand to, leave, to stand and leave, that uh, the pastor's phone number has not changed. Okay, my phone number has not changed. Uh, there were some issues that arose this week, but I want to remind you that the process we have in place here at the church is that when a family wants to hold a funeral service here at Shallow, their obligation, their responsibility is to get in contact with the deacon board. And then the deacon board will then make contact with the pastor, okay? So I have not received any phone calls about a funeral being held here at the church. But if the, uh, you know that practice was in place when our late pastor was here, and that's not a practice that we plan to, plan to uh, break or stop. If there's a family in need of holding a funeral service, Okay, we want to be the church for the community. Amen. That is not always a change. That's what God put the church here to be. Mm -hmm. A church for the community. Okay?
So be careful what you're listening to, be careful what you're entertaining. If you have any questions, any concerns, I have an open book policy. You can come to me at any time, and I'm willing to sit down and have a conversation with you. Amen. 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 Let us stand to receive our benediction. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace. And all of God's people said amen. 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 amen.